My next patron question is from Billy, who wanted to know about a possible alternate universe regarding a certain merger. What would have happened if Ted Turner did not sell MGM in 1986? How do you think they would fare under his leadership and would the Time Warner merger have reduced them further than it would in reality? For those who need further context, in 1985, Ted Turner acquired MGM United Artists, but then gave UA and its library back to its former owner, Kirk Kikorian. Due to financial problems, Turner also sold back MGM, but kept the film library. It's difficult to know how MGM would have done under Turner's watch. While he primarily bought the studio for the back catalog, he did have ambitions of running a movie studio, which is what later led to the creation of Turner Pictures. The most attractive part of MGM United Artists for anyone is the rights to the James Bond franchise. I've long maintained that had those two studios not merged, then MGM might not even exist today, as the Bond films have helped it on several occasions. It's the most valuable asset, even though Eon Productions has final say on what can be done with James Bond and the movies. I imagine those would have continued to be released by MGM under Turner leadership. Like he did with Hanna-Barbera, I'm sure the Pink Panther would have been viewed by Turner as a cartoon character with massive earnings potential and a key reason for starting Cartoon Network. The Rocky series would have probably continued too. Child's Play was a hit for MGM, but due to the new people in charge having a distaste for violent horror movies, the sequels ended up being made at Universal. If Ted Turner was running things, that probably would not have happened. David Kirshner, the producer of Child's Play, was even the chairman of Hanna-Barbera at the time, and Turner would become his boss a few years later. What about other hit movies, like A Fish Called Wanda, Rain Man, and Moonstruck? It's possible they still would have been released by a Turner-owned MGM. Something else to wonder in this alternate universe is if Turner still would have acquired New Line Cinema and Castle Rock Entertainment. He might have felt MGM and Turner Pictures were enough, and he did not need any more movie studios in his company. Something that probably would not have happened was Orion Pictures being acquired by MGM in 1997. Turner merged with Time Warner shortly before this, and so Orion and its library would have likely gone to someone else. There could very well be an alternate reality where Bill and Ted Face the Music was released by Paramount Pictures. Back to MGM with the Time Warner merger, they would have become one of their subsidiaries, and we have a textbook example of what could have happened when New Line became part of the company through said merger. They were nervous about whether Warner would want to keep them around and try to find other potential buyers, but in the end they still stayed there and thrived for about 10 years. New Line was helped by the success of the Rush Hour, Austin Powers, and Lord of the Rings movies. Meanwhile, MGM had the James Bond series. I'm sure Warner would have been ecstatic at getting the opportunity to release those, especially with how successful the Pierce Brosnan and eventually the Daniel Craig films would be. Outside of James Bond, though, I assume different projects would have been greenlit. Would Legally Blonde, Barbershop, and Agent Cody Banks been released by Warner-owned MGM? In the mid to late 2000s, MGM became a distributor for the Weinstein Company. Would that still have happened? Something worth remembering is that what led New Line to be absorbed into Warner Brothers was the disappointing performance of The Golden Compass. Outside of Bond, MGM was not prone to making expensive films in the 2000s, although maybe that would have been different with Warner money coming in. Here's an interesting fact, though. Even though New Line was able to get the film rights to The Lord of the Rings, MGM had long held onto the rights to The Hobbit. In an alternate universe where New Line was not acquired by Turner, Warner Brothers would have those Hobbit rights. Meanwhile, whoever may have bought New Line would then try to talk to WB about partnering on the Hobbit movies. Of course, had Turner bought New Line as well as MGM, the history of Peter Jackson's adaptations may have gone a lot differently. That's the thing when you start to wonder about these alternate merger scenarios. There are so many different possibilities on what could have happened. Something I think worth mentioning is even though MGM ended up under Amazon in the end and not Time Warner, Warner Brothers still has a stake in their films. WB is a theatrical distributor of MGM's movies outside the United States, and they currently handle the home video releases of the MGM library. It's why I find things like film rights ownership so fascinating as they jump from one company to the next and new deals are forged. Thank you for your question, Billy.